Um, uh, I'd like to, I'm going to talk to Valkyria directly. Um, uh, and I, well, when I was reading, I read the text two, two or three times. And um, uh, I couldn't get away from some thoughts that I had. And this, um, and these thoughts, I, I, I try to organize this into three questions, which are not exactly questions, but are, uh, well, they are more for me than for, for you. Okay, you, you mentioned Hannah Arendt in your text, and the, 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 the concept of action. So for Hannah Arendt, and I'm going to say that, for Hannah Arendt, action is connected with discourse. So. Um, it's not, it's not enough to, to do something, but it's to act. But it's important to, to say that you act. To, the, the things are one thing for her. And this way, you, when I say what I do, when, and I do what I say, I define myself as a person. I define my identity. I find my identity in this definition of discourse and action. Well. Uh, Acting becomes then one of the movements within agency, in my opinion, which is uh, identity, action, acting, discourse, people connected with it. Because if I don't uh, say something, to, if I don't have my interlocutor in this uh, situation, I don't, I can't, uh, even if it's, uh, this interlocutor, interlocutor is myself, I have no uh, identity. This is the other, I depend on the other. So, this is my, my idea of agency. Uh, well, so, if, I, if, I, if, if in the agency process I have all this together, action, people, and uh, language, then this is uh, the production of meaning, meaning made, okay, for me and for the other. Well, so I, I kept thinking of this and I couldn't stop thinking about the relationship between English and Portuguese because of the traditions you mentioned. So I'm gonna, the first class, the first situation, scenario, I don't know how to say this, not a question. The, tra the tradition of teaching Portuguese resembles the, the teaching of Latin in Brazil. And so we, we still learn uh, at school to analyze parts of the language in the hope that in the future, one day, we can put things together and produce something, produce a text. This is the tradition of teaching Portuguese in Brazil. The same happens to English teaching. For two, in my opinion, for two reasons. The first one is related to the teacher's memories of their learning Portuguese as native speakers of Portuguese and the repetition of those practices uh, in their classes. This is one of the reasons. The second reason is that most English teachers in regular education have graduated both in Portuguese and in English. Being English, the less important part of this graduation, the most important part is Portuguese, which is in this moment, in this graduation uh, of uh, courses, they learn to break things in part, to teach Portuguese as we do in our public, and as we have learned. Uh, so. Isn't this tradition, my first question, isn't this tradition a way of agency uh, in the sense that they are, they are just producing, they are just acting and the same way and the same time using language, the way as, as if they, were, they, were, they are responding to this uh, process, as you, as you mentioned tradition. The second one. It's more related to this uh, religious um, tradition. Uh, on looking at the religious catechist, catechist tradition of teaching Portuguese, 
as a way, uh, well, I'm talking about the moment when the Jesuits came to Brazil, and this they had, they had according to Todorov, they had this modernist project of uh, turning those people into Christian people by speaking Christian languages, which were the languages that descended from Latin. That is Portuguese. Of course, this. Uh, idea was to this idea of changing those people of teaching Portuguese was related to the colonial uh, colonialist aspect. So this uh, missionary vocational attitude towards the other. Uh, present some values in the teaching profession. Uh, 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 nowadays, the, uh, I mean, I keep thinking if the devaluation of the teaching profession here in Brazil, in terms of money and teaching structure, is associated with the idea of vocation. That, that is this tradition of Je Jesuit, uh, this Jesuit tradition. That is, vocation to bring people to light as an excuse not to pay teachers well and not to consider this occupation here in Brazil as a profession instead of a vocation. So isn't the, the, the attitude of the teachers towards their teaching a response to this uh, non-professional status, uh, vocational aspect. So, I don't know. It's another question. Then the last one. One important aspect of language teaching tradition in Brazil comes from the colonial period. In 1700s, many languages circulated in Brazil. They were they were essentially oral languages that is called lingua gerais or general languages. And they were used with the Portuguese and with the Brazilians, the, the indigenous people, to communicate, to solve problems. Uh, so, Portuguese was only used in the official, in the official documents, to uh, official documents with the crown from and to the crown. With the coming of the royal family to Brazil in the beginning of the 1900s, the 19th century, and, the turn, and with the turning of the country into the head of the empire, uh, Portuguese became the official national whatever language. They had, it had to be used for communication and for writing and for, okay for writing and for uh, speaking. Uh, I'm finishing. This huge transplantation of language and culture to Brazil provoked uh, what we call a, sh a, sh a shock in our discursive memories. Uh, well, that's the question. As Brazilians then, we have a discursive oral memory which influences our identity relations <coughs> at school. Uh, and then, well, and this is, uh, we have this discursive memory and the discursive shock. Turning into English, language, uh, teaching and learning, Although there is a general agreement about the importance of this language in global communication context, mainly in technological and business area, recognized both by, by teachers and students at schools, there seems to be a great resistance against teaching and learning this language. So my question is, can this resistance be seen as a kind of agency again due to this linguistic shock? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well